I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today, but I know what to do. I'm going to praise him and I'm going to serve him. I'm going to lift him up and we just thank him. Thank you, Elder Wilson and Elder Amachuku for the powerful introduction. We certainly thank the, the Douglas Leadership Institute for their kind acknowledgement of uh, my wife and me and this great church. You know, um, I found out that uh, there are many people who tune in to hear what we think. I've had people from California and everywhere says, Bishop, we watch your broadcast and we tune in uh, to your monologues. We listen to hear of what you have to say on certain issues. You know, sometimes in our church, we don't realize that God has given us the ear uh, of the nation on many things. And one of the reasons I believe that, that it is is that we don't walk in lockstep. We are not group think. We, we, we believe in God's truth. Last week, we constantly, <clears throat> we, we acknowledge Elder Anthony Wilson for his tremendous job in being the coordinator of our Vision Keepers Leadership Conference. Truth Keepers, right? The conference officially closed out last Sunday. Am I right about that? Less than 24 hours later. You know, I said that God's preparing us for something. Less than 24 hours later, or I guess it may have been 24 hours later, it was time to have a truth leader to speak up. Because here, the Douglas Leadership Institute hosted the lieutenant governor and others here, um, and the lieutenant governor said something that somebody thought was controversial. I want to praise the Lord for my first assistant, Elder John Amanchuku. <laughs> A.K.A. Elder John. <laughs> we needed a truth leader because after the lieutenant governor spoke, someone took offense and since he was here when he uttered his controversial, extreme views, they called the church and said, we want to hear from Bishop Wooden. We want to know what he thinks, or his representative. I'm glad, since I can't be in two places at one time. My wife and I was in Los Angeles at the leadership conference of the Church of God in Christ. I thank God that we had a leader ready. Right. And Elder John Amanchuku, ready, ready. Brethren, bring my placards out and stand. I said to him when he called me, I said, well, you can handle it. All I want you to do is just go into my office, look to the right. You'll see over in a stack something that I won't show on. The rest you do because you know. And I know by now you've witnessed the interview and you saw how this young man masterfully stood for God's truth. He did not allow <clears throat> himself to be manipulated by the media. He did not allow them to make it about what it was not about. They tried to become emotional. We're in a day of emotional arguments. They, they question, well, what about the shock of it? And I thank God that Elder Amon Chuku, a trained defender of the faith, <laughs> trains. And when you've been here, after a while, if you're paying attention, you ought to be trained. A trained defender said, oh, no, there's no shock. This is old. 
Bishop's been talking about this for a long time. This is, this is not new. I, I tell you what, if I was the interviewer's pastor, I'd want WRL to do a story on me so I could explain either that the interviewer either don't attend church on a regular basis or as a black minister, would you please explain why you haven't explained to your, told your congregation of the evils of Planned Parenthood? Everybody's talking about being woke. Woke! Woke! And, and, and you didn't know that Margaret Sanger you, you didn't know that Margaret Sanger said this. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood. Now, this was written in 1939. So how are you going to be woke? How are you going to be a woke church and don't know this? This is old. This is old. It's you bishops and pastors and leaders out there, if you haven't told your congregation about the number one killer of African Americans, an organization that kills more Af African Americans every two weeks than the Klan did in its entire history, you are not qualified to use the word woke. For you are the epitome of being asleep. You're asleep at the wheel. Now, Hillary Clinton did, when she received the Margaret Sanger Award, Hillary Clinton did say, I admire Margaret Sanger. Enormously, not a little bit, enormously. That's right, all y'all who are taking pictures, that's fine. Come on, y'all can, you can get them. She did, these are her words. They're not my words. You know what, I would have never, there's no politician Republican nor Democrat. See, I'm, I'm an independent. No politician would get my vote nor my support if they would have said, I admire Margaret Sanger. The woman who said, our goal is the extermination of the Negro race. What kind of Negro would vote for a woman who would say such a thing? Got to be a dumb Negro to do that. Something, something wrong with you, Negro. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. Kill a Negro. Her vision. Kill the Negro race. Her vision. This is what Hillary said when she got her award. Said Hillary Clinton, Hillary Rodham Clinton, I am really in awe of her. What? <clears throat> What? I am really in awe of her. There is a lot of lessons we can learn from her. And you know what they are? Kill a Negro. There's a lesson. Kill the Negro population. Now how? With all of this, we hate Donald Trump. Trump didn't say that. And Trump didn't say this. Now, right quick, because I got to preach. I'm not going to preach about this, but, but people want to know. People want to know. Now, what did the governor say? What did the lieutenant governor? I'm prophesying. <laughs> what did the lieutenant governor say? Here's what these were. Now, this is a direct quote. There is no doubt that when Planned Parenthood was created, it was created to destroy the entire black race. Now that's what Margaret Sanger just said. All right, now the Lieutenant Governor said what Margaret Sanger said. He didn't make up anything. He said what Margaret said. All right? And he said that was the purpose of Planned Parenthood. That's what Margaret said. This is what Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest said here. This is what Margaret said in 39. Uh, that's not just some talk, I'm going back to the quote, on the side, that was the purpose when that organization was created. And he went on to say, I'm quoting him, the Lieutenant Governor, Dan Forrest, 
how the black community can't come together and see that and understand that and fight against it, I don't know. He added, and how the white community can't come together and see that and fight against it, I don't know either. Now, will somebody tell me, where's the controversy in that statement? Now, now, let's be fair, because the lieutenant governor was being quite generous, because the main people who fight for life in this country, the main people who fight for the lives of the unborn in this country, the main people who march for the lives of the unborn in this country, even though it doesn't disproportionately affect their race. It affects their race, but it doesn't disproportionately affect their race. The main people who fight for the life of the unborn are white people. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. This is upper room. This is upper room, baby. We just, this is an honest church. You should hear the things that you have to contend with when you're trying to get the average African-American preacher to just come to the clinic and see what's going on. Where are there other issues? Not if you don't get born. Everything starts with birth. So it, it was Sanger's visit. So the NAACP uh, weighed in. Uh, first, Planned Parenthood weighed in. Quote, Planned Parenthood, it is unfortunate that Mr. Forrest chose to push his extreme political agenda. Saving babies. Saving babies. That's now an extreme political agenda. An extreme political agenda. Save a baby. On a day that should unite us in celebrating the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who devoted his life to the fight for equality and racial justice. Does that not apply to the unborn? Does it not apply? Raise your hand if you don't think it does. Does it not apply to the unborn? Are unborns not also uh, accorded and, and afforded the Bill of Rights? Uh, d d does not the Bible give the unborn personhood? David gave it personhood. God gave it personhood. David said, while I've been formed in the womb, my life was written. And I don't know what a lady can give birth to other than a person anyway. How many women ever gave birth to an alligator? Let me see you wave your hand. It's a person. There's nothing else it, it can be. So he called it an extreme political agenda on the day of celebrating uh, that should unite us in the celebrating uh, of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who devoted his life to equality and racial justice. Birdsong said, the, he's the Planned Parenthood guy, the reality is that Dr. King admired the work of Planned Parenthood and in 1966 was given an award for his work in the partnership in partnership with Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which was accepted by his wife, Coretta Scott King. Okay, so Dr. King admired uh, Planned uh, Parenthood. Yes, he 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 did, and, and this is why he said this. This is why Dr. King said this. The Negro cannot win if he is willing to sacrifice the, the futures of his children for immediate personal comfort and safety. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Does that sound like admiring Planned Parenthood? Does that sound like going along with abortion when he said the Negro cannot win? If he is willing to sacrifice the futures 
of his children. Every time you abort a child, there's no future. And he's exactly right. That, that's a reason why our population won't grow. That's a reason why we're locked into being between 12 and 13%, 11% of the population. The Hispanics have just surpassed us. They've just surpassed us. All you woke preachers, I want you to wake up to that fact. They, they, they surpassed us. You know why? By and large, they, they give birth. Because now black folk, we're having sex. Now we're doing what it takes to grow. The Negro hadn't lost that. Dr. King was among a select group of Negro leaders handpicked to promote a seemingly beneficial plan to promote healthy family planning. Listen to this. And it was a plan of wolf, a plan of wolf in sheep's clothing, a Trojan horse, horse proportions, of Trojan horse proportions. Dr. King, a man of love, peace, and nonviolence, and a strong and a strong Christian faith would be, would be assassinated before the truth of the Planned Parenthood map for genocide would be made public. After the passage of Roe v. Wade, the abortion agenda is in direct conflict with the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King. Amen. Amen. Now, let me move on. I'm almost done because I, I got to preach. Uh, and I, guess what? I got to, uh, I think I'm going to dedicate some babies today. Am I going to dedicate a baby? Yes, I get to christen a baby today. Dedicate a child to God. Amen. Planned Parenthood didn't get this one. Here's what uh, Gerald Givens, NAACP Raleigh, and I have nothing negative to say about Mr. Givens. I don't know Mr. Givens, so I have no, nothing, nothing, nothing. My comments is not about him personally. As far as I know, he's a great guy. Probably would like him if I met him, hopefully. But I want to speak on his comments. See, you got to know how to stick to the issues and then you and, and comment on the issues. Because I'm not here to fight Gerald Givens as a brother. I, I don't know him. I have no fight with him, but I have a big fight with what he had to say. Raleigh NAACP. He said this. His opposition to organizations like Planned Parenthood. Well, let me go, go back. I'm not sure why the governor, the lieutenant governor, feels he's authorized to speak on behalf of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or on what African American people see. Gerald Givens, president of NAACP, said in an email. His opposition to organizations like Planned Parenthood show he is not, he has not learned much about Dr. King. However, Dr. King probably would agree, would agree we have unfinished business in education, economics, health care, and voting rights in North Carolina. We're glad the lieutenant governor agrees. Now, God bless a brother Givens, um, um, and I have a, a, a nothing but respect for him. But this doesn't make sense because, number one, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is, because I marched for it when President Reagan signed it into law, 1983, I marched. I was one of the ones who marched. I was at Fayetteville State. I marched for it. The first time I marched for something. I'll never forget. I marched for it. Did you march for it? I marched for it. So you marched. I marched. Where were you? I guess you were asleep. I was woke then. <laughs> President Reagan signed it into law. A Republican. White man. Did y'all know Reagan was white? But Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is a national holiday, is a federal holiday. So if it's a federal holiday, a national federal holiday 
for all to participate in and observe. Why would you say that the lieutenant governor, even though he was not speaking for Dr. King, he was speaking for life. But had he been speaking for Dr. King, are you saying that the lieutenant governor of the state of North Carolina cannot speak for, quote from, or talk about an American who has been observed, who has been honored with a federal holiday, a national federal holiday? It, doesn't the fact that it is a federal holiday says that everybody gets to participate? Everybody gets to weigh in? Hasn't Dr. King left uh, just tons of literature, writings, sermons, speeches? Is not he a historical figure almost of biblical proportions that we all love, honor, and admire? And wasn't the fact that the point of blacks marching for it to become, blacks and whites, but mainly blacks, for it to become a federal holiday would be for everyone to observe it? It's not a black holiday. So why couldn't the lieutenant governor speak to it? I would like to know from uh, uh, Gerald Givens, does he feel the same way about the governor, Roy Cooper? He's white. And Governor Cooper have on multiple occasions had something to say about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is a, is a legal holiday for everybody. And we want all people, whether they're white, whether they're black, they can be Democrats or, or Republicans or whatever, to celebrate Dr. King's birthday. So I celebrate Elder Aman Chuku for handling the situation. I thank God for God's truth, and, and I want to say this, even if Dr. King would have been in favor of Planned Parenthood, and he wasn't, and their wicked agenda, an agenda that has caused 46% of blacks who should be here. Since 1973, 46% of blacks who should be here are missing due to abortion alone. 46%. And, and I, don't, I don't want to get political, but I don't understand how any person of color, if you have a choice, you can be an independent, you can be a Republican. If you have a choice, I don't understand how any person of color can have their Jan John Hancock affixed to a political party that has in its party platform the support of an organization that supports a procedure that has wiped out 46% of African Americans since 1973. How can you do that and then turn around and call yourself woke? Oh no, oh no, you're not woke, you're asleep. You're a drug. They give, they've given you pro, what is it, Profocol? Pro, is that, am I saying it right? Profocol. That's the stuff that, put, that killed Michael Jackson. You're, you're in a deep sleep. Oh, you're hibernating because you're not thinking. Because if without birth there is nothing, King couldn't grow up to be Martin Luther King had he not been born. You couldn't have grown up to be you had you not been born. So we thank God for Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, I thank God for Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest. I have no qualms or issues with his comments whatsoever. And even if King would have, even if King would have been for abortion, the God of this book, it's not. And the last time I checked, on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and the best.
for a world of lost sinners was slain. Jesus died and rose again for every one of us. We get our morals from the Bible. We get our beliefs from the Bible. We form our opinions and ideologies on life from the Bible. Not from any political party and not from any human being living or dead. He could be a preacher or whatever. When you disagree with God, which Dr. King did not on this issue, but had he disagreed with God, the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar. Clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise.